Have you guys seen the new Cinderella movie? I hear it has a feminist twist. I mean, it's really not surprising seeing as it comes from the most socially conscious production company there is, Amazon Studios. Yas Queen, you can be a woman in the workforce. Get it, girl boss. But um, we are gonna have to lay you off if you try to join a union. Let's just say I was a little put off by the latest Cinderella adaptation's attempt at social commentary. I'm certainly not the first person to take issue with this. In the months leading up to the film's release, it's become a fairly popular popular target of internet ridicule. Pretty much every piece of news released about this film made it sound worse and worse. A neoliberal take on a classic fairy tale starring Camila Cabello and James Corden, and it's a jukebox musical? The people of Twitter, excluding Camila Cabello stands, came together in a rare moment of unity to absolutely bully the hell out of this movie. And I'm disappointed to announce that the bullying was justified. This film was marketed as a feminist take on the classic fairy tale, but in my opinion, its narrative is ignorant at best and willfully propagandist at worst. It seems to want to correct things about the story that I don't really think anyone was asking to have corrected. It promotes an outdated, corporatized idea of feminism, and even outside of its thematic failures, it's still a pretty bad movie. So buckle up, we're gaslight gatekeep girl bossing our way into the video. Number one, why are we even doing this? I'd say the most immediate problem with this concept is that the original Cinderella story is not all that offensive to begin with, and that lampooning or subverting even the most sexist elements of the story is played out and uninteresting. Let's take a look at gender in the classic Cinderella story. There are many folk tales resembling Cinderella from all around the world dating all the way back to ancient Egypt, but most people in the West get their idea of the original, definitive Cinderella story from Charles Perrault's Cendrillon, written in the late 17th century. This story is a product of its time, largely in the gender roles of the characters. In this story, women can only really be servants or rich housewives. All of the eligible women in the story have the singular goal of marrying a prince, etc. These are the elements of the story that people seem to like to call attention to the most, but honestly, if we're examining gender and sexism in Cinderella, I think a far more interesting thing to analyze would be the role of the stepmother and stepsisters. There's this very clear dichotomy between Cinderella and the other women in her family, the girl and the other girls, if you will. It's sort of like whatever the G-rated version of a Madonna whore complex would be. In the original story and many subsequent adaptations, the stepfamily, especially the stepsisters, are almost caricatures of femininity. They're obsessed with their looks, their clothes, their hair and makeup, and attention from men. They wear gaudy dresses and jewelry, their hair is piled into those bulky sausage curls. But what's interesting about this is that Cinderella herself also desires beauty and fine things and the prince's attention, but it's okay when she does it because she's poor and less annoying about it, I guess. I feel like this is a sentiment about women that very much still exists, wanting women to look and act desirable all the time, but demonizing women who visibly make an effort or, God forbid, think or know that they're attractive. Call it the one direction what makes you beautiful effect. <laughs> it's actually hotter when she's insecure about the way she looks. By the way, I'm not saying that the stepsisters did nothing wrong, like, I'm aware that they're abusers and whatnot, I'm just saying it's interesting how most versions of the story accentuate their evilness with supposedly undesirable feminine traits, like ugliness, poor taste, even bad singing. In general, Perrault's version is kinder than a lot of the subsequent versions. The stepfamily isn't quite as evil as they are in other versions, and the story even ends with Cinderella forgiving the stepsisters and inviting them to live with her in the castle. And then meanwhile, you have the Brothers Grimm version where Cinderella's magical doves peck the sisters' eyes out. So if you were to address sexism in Cinderella, I personally think that would be the most interesting place to start. But as as I said, I think most modern Cinderella stories, including the 2021 version, that attempt to take aim at sexism in the story generally only really care to address the marrying a prince part, which in my opinion is a basic and uninteresting angle. We'll get married and you will live the rest of your life as royalty. Royalty? What about my work? 
I guess when I read a fairy tale from the 1600s, I can understand that at that time, marriage was considered kind of the pinnacle of a woman's life. And I can recognize that that is patriarchal and unfair, while also not really needing to see it subverted in the year 2021 when I've been seeing media critique that very thing for my entire life. For me, I think Enchanted was the last enjoyable lampooning of basic fairy tale tropes, and since then it's kind of felt like old news. So to see a Cinderella adaptation in this day and age where the only real subversion of the original is to make the women more independent feels a bit played out, to say the least. But it's not simply the fact that the film does this, it's how it does this. Number two, a girl boss is a wish your heart makes. What exactly is feminism according to this film? The film's attempt at feminism is a corporatized fantasy in which women not being a part of the workforce is seemingly the only manifestation of sexism or the patriarchy. It's worth mentioning here that sexism is also seemingly the only inequality to exist in this universe. Like, there's no racism or anything presumably because the movie didn't want to have to deal with that. In this world, women simply need to pull themselves up by their bootstraps in order to break free from oppression. It's actually kind of comical the way almost every female character in the film at some point reveals that she wishes she could do X dream job instead of being a lowly housewife or princess. I mean, wouldn't it just be great if I could have my own shop? I've never shared this with anyone before, but... I used to play piano. I would be embarrassed if I wasn't so bored with my life. But since I'm here, I would love to stay and help sort out this whole crown issue. Yeah, guys, we can end sexism by integrating women into the monarchy. Because, you know, there's nothing less patriarchal than the monarchy. By this film's logic, the only thing standing between women and emancipation is work and money. By this film's definition, feminism is capitalism. Now, I don't mean to sound like a crazy radical or anything, but I personally don't think capitalism is conducive to women's liberation, or really anyone's liberation. In many ways, capitalism and the patriarchy are in a symbiotic relationship, and I don't think that's the most unpopular sentiment, especially among young people. But this film seems to believe the opposite, that capitalism is liberation. You'd better have an LLC name picked out, ladies, because the only way you're going to get equal rights is by hustling for that coin or something. Is it any surprise that this very rhetoric is what helps market pyramid schemes to financially vulnerable women? I also kind of resent the fact that whenever these movies want to make a business-minded female character, they make her a fashion designer because that's like a woman job. I would probably like this movie more if Cinderella was like, what about my work as an architectural engineer? In short, this type of girl boss feminism, in addition to being pretty dated and reviled in the mainstream consciousness, especially the very demographic that this film was trying to market itself to, feels like putting a band-aid over the issue of sexism. Asking women to liberate themselves by joining the system that helps facilitate their oppression is completely counterintuitive. Number three, tell us more about your opinions on Cinderella Jane. Was there anything I liked about this movie? Um, I kind of enjoyed the male lead, Nicholas Galitzine. I first saw him a few years ago in the Irish movie Handsome Devil, which I would recommend, I guess. It's better than this. I didn't know he could sing, but I think he gives one of the better vocal performances in the movie. Speaking of which, Adina Menzel killed it as usual. She probably should have been the lead. And before the Camila stands come for me, I really have no strong feelings about Camila Cabello. I don't listen to her music. I think she's a pretty good singer, and her acting performance in this is perfectly serviceable. There are some rough moments with her vocal performance, not so much because she's a bad singer, I don't think, but more because it sounds like they did almost no editing of the vocals, which is a strange choice. I appreciate not going overboard with the auto-tune, but a little bit of polishing might have been nice. 
this was supposed to be things I liked, but uh, now that we're here, let's keep going with things I didn't. Don't get me wrong, I love a musical. I can even get behind a jukebox musical, but I don't like the way in which this movie is a musical. I don't like that it's mostly a jukebox musical with like two original songs. It's confusing. There's also no theme to the jukebox soundtrack. It's a seemingly random selection of pop songs, and mostly very overdone songs at that. We are living in a material world, and I am a material girl. Cause we are living in a material world, and I am a material girl. We are living in a material world, and I am a material girl. Each morning I get up, I die a little. Can barely stand on my feet. You catch us Look in the mirror and cry. Lord, what you're doing to me? I spent all my years oh, believing you. I just can't get no relief. Somebody, oh somebody, can anybody find me? I cannot believe they dragged my boy Freddy into this. Hasn't he been through enough these past few years? I also really dislike the smugly self-aware brand of humor this film employs. It's pretty common in big studio movies nowadays to have like a big stupid thing happen and then have a character be like, can you believe that big stupid thing that just happened? What the? Whoa! Oh, that happened. Oh. Oh. We're still friends, right? Depends on how hard you hit me. I think the intention here is to show the audience that you're self-aware and in on the joke, but to me it always just comes off like the filmmakers are insecure and embarrassed by their own movie, which is pretty cringeworthy to watch. Do you want to go to that ball and meet a bunch of rich people who will change your life? Yes, I was just crying and singing about it like two minutes ago. Any way you can make them more comfortable? No. But your magic. Women's shoes are as they are. I just relieved myself, and you are not going to believe how it happens. Through the front tail, we know. Yes! Unbelievable, is it? <laughs> also, James Corden is in it. Boo. Goodness, look at the time. If I don't boost my return on investment by midnight, I'll turn back into a socialist pumpkin. If you liked this movie, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with you. But I would encourage some critical thinking regarding what it and anything you watch is trying to say to you. Honestly, as much as I love a completely dumb, fun bad movie, what really fascinate me are these films with deep ideological issues. There's really nothing like it. Speaking of which, stay tuned for Amazon Studios' biographical film about the first female detective in the Pinkerton Detective Agency. You know, the famous union-busting security firm, recently hired by Amazon, to bust unions? Seriously, it's so important to be mindful and critical of the media we consume which is why I only watch Lifetime movies. By the way, I'm a woman, which means that subscribing to my YouTube channel is feminism.